The disease is weakening. Strength is coming back to you, glory to God. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And that holy thing of God shall move in your life. And you shall be here. I'm a child of victory. I'm a child of success. Pastor Chris, we're hearing. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. How can a child that had no problem at all suddenly be afflicted with tuberculosis or asthma. Where did it come from? These are spiritual forces that run men's lives. It's a kingdom of darkness. Then a man came he, he, he oh boy he was God's intrusion into the sense realm Jesus of Nazareth he was born into this present evil world he came into this present evil world but he was not of this world He came in here to live among us. Oh, the Bible says he was in the world. The world was made by him. The world knew him not. He came unto his own. His own received him not. But he had something to give. <laughs> he had something to give. To men and women that have been dominated by satanic forces. He had something to give. Oh, look at him walking the streets. Jesus of Nazareth. They didn't know who he was. But he was more than a man. He was himself God. Hallelujah. Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. Meaning he had a kingdom. That's what he said to Pilate. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. He didn't say, I don't have a kingdom. He said, my kingdom is not of this world. St. John's Gospel, chapter 15. Have you seen it? Can you read verse 19 to me? Hello. Who's reading? Did I tell you what? Uh huh. Oh, let me read it out. Some people don't know where it is, they're still looking for it. If you were of the world, some are telling me that there's no verse 19. <laughs> Have you found it now? Okay, read it together. Want to go? He says, if you were of the world, the world would love its own. He says, but because you are not of the world, and I've chosen you out of the world, we don't belong here. We're not of this world. Understand this. 
every nation. Every nation is governed by the rulers of the darkness of this world. By spiritual wickedness in high places. I'll show that to you in a moment from the Bible. Only Israel, only Israel was the nation chosen by God that Satan had no legal claims over. Why? Because they had a system. Oh. Their system was not set up by fallen men. Are you following this now? Their system was set up by God. He gave them laws, righteous laws to live by. Satan had no claims over them. They lived by a different set of laws. All other nations sat down to decide. We do this or we don't do that. We want this, we don't want that. Human beings, fallen men with fallen laws. Only Israel had a law given to them by God. Oh, I like it. Turn to the book of Psalms. Let me show you something. I love it. I love it. I love it. Psalm 33. Oh, oh hallelujah. 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 Oh, 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 oh. Is something turning inside you? Psalm 33. I want you all to read verse 12. Want to go. Hallelujah. He says, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he had chosen for his inheritance. I want you to notice this. You know, a lot of people say, well, our country belongs to God and, uh, you know, the, America belongs to God. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, France, I don't know, all of them, they say they belong to God. The Bible doesn't say, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed as the people who have chosen the Lord. He says, whom the Lord has chosen for his inheritance. It's God doing the choosing. It's not man saying we have chosen him. It's whom the Lord had chosen. And he said he chose Israel. And he gave them his laws. Democracy is not, is not God's method. I'm not against democracy. The truth is, almost no nation, in fact, I don't know any nation in the world that's a democracy. That's a fact. A big fact. You say, what about the U.S.? The U.S. is not a democracy. It's a republic. And there's a difference between the two. I always wonder why the world has such contradictions. That's the reason why they have two parties, two major parties, the Democrats and the Republicans. It's the ideology. Democracy is, the substance of democracy is, we rule by ourselves according to the laws that we have made and our rulers are those that we have chosen and there are no absolutes whatever we say is right is right and when we change our minds to say it is now wrong it becomes wrong and when we change our minds again to say that which we have said was wrong is now right it becomes right that is democracy. In a republic, you have absolutes. There are things, whether the people agree or not, that are wrong. 
They have accepted certain things to be right or wrong. And those things will not change. For example, murder will never be right in a republic. It could become right in a democracy. If one day they say survival of the fittest, and they can pass it into law, that's democracy. So we have, in reality, uh, democratic republicans. <laughs> I think that's why the guy in Congo called his nation the Democratic Republic of Congo. He had to have them all together. So we say here, you're practicing what? Uh, democracy in the Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> so I, I think that they are trying to reorganize their minds about the whole stuff. Yeah. But that's what it's all about, really. But God gave the children of Israel his own laws. He gave them laws. You know the story? Many, 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 many years later, they rejected him and rejected his laws and kicked him out of the temple and said, we don't want you. We want to be like other nations. Have you ever felt tired of being in church on Sunday mornings? You just want to find out what some other guys are enjoying on Sunday when everywhere is quiet. You want to find out on Sunday at home what they show on TV when all honest men have gone to church. <laughs> and you hold your remote control. You deceived everybody that you were sick. You weren't going to church today. Soon as they were all gone, you came to the sitting room and started scrolling the TV. <laughs> you watched everything they had to show. Shame on you. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But you see, all other nations had their own laws dominated by Satan. Let me show you something. The book of Daniel. God is raising up sons. He's raising up his children Amen. to take over the world, Amen. to walk in authority, to walk in power. Do you understand what I'm talking about? God wants to use you. When you tell somebody, God bless you, listen, that, thing, that little statement heaven responds to it but you see but the nepios have made that word of non effect jesus said the jews made the word of god of non effect when you are a nepios god bless you doesn't mean anything to you, you say oh, amen, amen. But you see, God has, a, he has his own kingdom. We'll talk about that in a moment. There's a way that he has designed. This, this thing seems simple. They're so simple. Sometimes the super intelligentsia don't accept it. Let's go. Are you ready? Where are you going? Book of Daniel. Thank you. Daniel chapter number... Oh, 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 oh. Aya, aya, aya. Let me give you the background. Daniel was praying. On this occasion, the Bible says he was fasting because of his people. He was fasting and praying. 
And he prayed and fasted for 21 days. That is three weeks. Is that correct? Let me read it to you from verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, king of Persia, that was the empire of the day, Persia, a thing was revered unto Daniel, whose name was called Bethesazar. And the thing was true, but the time appointed was long. And he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh, nor wine, that's meat, nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Are you there? Okay, let's see what happened. He says, at the end of those three weeks, something happened to me, he says. I want you to go to verse 10. He was on his knees, praying. He says, and behold, an hand touched me, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, an angel came to him, an angel. An angel came to Daniel. Verse 11, and he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. Oh. Even the angels knew that God loved Daniel. Does God love Daniel more than he loves us? I don't think so. Are you still there? Because you see, if at all there was a difference, I think he loves us more. Because you see, Why didn't Jesus come in Daniel's day? It was long after Daniel come and gone. Or he came ahead of me. And I'm a joint heir with him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So don't get jealous of Daniel because the Bible says, a man greatly beloved. Listen, you are greatly beloved. But I want us to see something nice here. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee am I now sent. God has sent me unto you, he says. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come because of thy words. Look, Daniel was fasting for 21 days. But the angel says, the very first day that you began to pray, he says, God heard your prayer. And I was sent because of your words. This is absolutely remarkable. This is not the first time this is happening. Turn to chapter 9. Let me show you something. It's just wonderful. Now, if you would look at just a moment. Verse 23. Let me read it from verse 22, all right? And he informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel. I am now come forth to give this skill and understanding. 
at the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth. I was commanded, and I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore understand the matter and consider the vision. Listen, an angel had come to him before in chapter 9. He said, from the very beginning when you began to pray, the commandment came forth. I was dispatched. As soon as you started praying, I was sent. He says, because you are greatly beloved. Look at the reason. He said, because you are greatly beloved. God loves you so much. So, now we come to chapter 10. The angel is saying, look, it's not the 21 days that you fasted that's making me come. I was sent the very first day. Day one, when you started praying. He said, the word came. Go to Daniel. He is in Persia. Go to him and give him this revelation. And the angel whew, went out of heaven. Headed for Persia. Okay, if God heard the first day, and that very first day, he sent the angel, what in the world happened? 21 days? Look at it. Verse 12 again. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince, aha, I want you to notice, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me for one and twenty days. That's twenty-one days. He says, I was attacked. He says, 21 days ago, God sent me from heaven. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, this was a spiritual being, not a human being. And he was called the prince. That means, the, the, the Greek word means ruler. The ruler of the kingdom of Persia. So Satan has divided the world. And appointed his own angels, his angelic beings all over the world. He has those who rule over nations. He has those who rule over states. He has those who rule over little cities and towns and villages. He has those who rule over families and individuals. There are more demons, more fallen angels than human beings in the world. For you to understand that. They outnumber human beings. So he has more than enough to distribute to all over the world. So he set one over Persia. That was the one that determined what happened in Persia. And so when God sent an angel to Daniel, who was in Persia, the prince, the ruler of the kingdom, the dark kingdom of Persia, withstood the angel. He attacked him. Imagine, 21 days. He held him up for 21 days. Daniel was praying. Oh God, why are you not hearing me? God heard. God dispatched an angel. Listen, the spirit world. You know, some people think that God just does whatever he wants to do. When he just wakes up, he says, hey, I don't like this thing. You know, they just think God does whatever he likes. God is not like that. He's very organized. Why didn't he get into the fight too? No, because there are laws. There are laws in the realm of the spirit. The prince of Persia withstood the angel. He fought against the angel. The angel was fighting. He was there. 21 days passed by. Let's see what happened. Verse 13 again. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, 
Michael is one of the chief princes. So there are other chief princes. Hallelujah. <laughs> Michael is the one that God set over Israel. He is the, he is the prince, the ruler of Israel. You can read about him in the book of Revelation. It's wonderful. Let's talk about this. You still there? He says, but, but lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. He says, I was arrested. I was arrested. No, read it in better English. He says, I was arrested for 21 days by the ruler of Persia. An angel. <laughs> he was arrested by those wicked spirits in the heavenlies. This particular devil was in the heavenlies. And he arrested the angel of God. I wonder how many other angels were with him. They arrested him, kept in the 21 days until Michael came. And Michael scattered everywhere. <laughs> hey. Now you can understand why sometimes God tells you not to go somewhere. Not because he can't deliver you. But because your level of faith has not warranted a higher level of angel. Because the angel that is with you could be arrested. <laughs> You see, there are different levels. There are different levels. So in verse 14, it says, Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. Praise the Lord. Now let's go straight to verse 19. The angel is still speaking. And said, O oh man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee. Be strong, yea, be strong. Hallelujah. The angel is ministering to Daniel. He is ministering to Daniel. He says, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened. Somba, Kaya. The angel said, be strong. He said it. He didn't put something inside Daniel. He said it. He ministered to him by words. And Daniel said, and I was strengthened. And I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. Then said he, knowest thou wherefore I come unto thee? And now will I return to fight with the prince of Persia. See, because on my way out of here, I still have to engage the prince of Persia in a fight. And when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grisha shall come. And you know, after that, Greece came in. Because when he overcame the prince of Persia, Satan had to change him. Because he was beaten, he was overcome. They wouldn't pound him and leave him there. Look, look, why, listen, listen, Michael was there. We'll see that in a moment. So when this angel went back, he and Michael engaged the prince of Persia in that fight. He said, and when I am gone, the prince of Grisha shall come. He's given a revelation of another kingdom that will come after Persia. And that's what happened. Well, let's read. Verse 21. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things, but Michael, your prince. Another version says, the prince of Israel. Praise God. Yeah. What am I showing you? 
the dark world with which we or against which we have to fight the dark world there's a dark world a world of darkness it is here now this evil world is here now the world of darkness is right here sometimes you find yourself with a very sharp pain nothing was wrong before then everything was all right and suddenly ah! hey hey Hey, you you can't bend. You can't. You hey, hey, hey. you know you're looking for where to sit down. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> and they may carry you like that. Hey, hey, you know, from one trouble to another, it's worse. It's worse. It's worse. You thought it was a little thing. It's two weeks now. Ah, it's one year now. Since then, you've been working like this. <laughs> What happened? Once upon a time. Fiery darts of the wicked. <laughs> Just like that. For some others, you woke up and you saw something. You looked since that day. You've not been able to see again. <laughs> Since that day, it's one eye you've been using. Because somebody told you to look at something. You looked. <laughs> you know, it sounds funny now, but the, the, this is the reality. It's where people live. Somebody went to the office. He was the boss. Everything was all right until that day. He sat on his desk and... They had to carry him from there to the hospital and he never returned. Why? Because someone else wanted his job. And that person had consulted with spiritual forces of darkness, rulers of the darkness of this world. And they concocted something for him and threw that missile. And when he came to work, hope, they hooked him. And from there, they carried him away. And someone else took his job. Some things like that will happen to Christians. Why? Because they are Nepios. He said, when we were Nepios, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But as many as are led by the Spirit of God, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, as many as are led. Oh, hallelujah! Hey! Those who are led, they come into the office. Hey! Phronesis! 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 For some reason, he is not sitting on the chair. For some reason, he starts talking in tongues. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Then the anointing is stared. The anointing is stared. When he sits on the chair, what was there bounces off. Then you hear a native doctor died somewhere. You didn't do anything. But when you stared the anointing and sat down on that chair, that evil that was sent against you. Somebody shout hallelujah. Glory to 
God, God. What is God waiting for? He says the earnest expectation of the creation waited for the manifestation of the sons of God, the hewers of God, who understand spiritual things. Hallelujah! Something has happened in the realm of the spirit. Daniel could not engage spiritual forces of darkness. He could not. Because they dominated the world in which he lived. And the law of his nation was broken. And Jehovah had gone out of the temple. Oh. He no longer could go to the temple of God. He no longer could offer those sacrifices. He no longer could go and have the ministry of the priesthood. Receive that ministry of a blessing that God had promised them. He no longer had it. Now living in the permissive will of God as a nation. Driven out of their inheritance. But you see the Bible says in Colossians chapter 1. From verse 12, it says, Giving thanks unto the Father, who hath made us meet, who hath qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the kingdom of light. There is another kingdom. It is called the kingdom of light. It says, Who hath delivered us from the domain, the authority, from the kingdom, the dominion of darkness, and translated, transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood. We have been transferred, taken out of the domain. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Taken out. We don't belong there anymore. We were transferred, translated from the dominion of darkness from the rulership of darkness oh hallelujah transferred into the kingdom of god's dear son jesus is our ruler jesus is our prince can you shout amen somebody he is our, our ruler now oh hallelujah let me tell you something even though we have angels who move around us the church is not given an angel like you have michael the prince of israel jesus christ head of the church ruler of the church when he was leaving the world, he said, I pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter. He said, he shall abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, the spirit of reality. Oh, 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 oh. The spirit of reality, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. Oh, in this world, this present evil world, they walk according to their senses. They know that cancer is there because they can feel it. They know it is there because they can see it. They know it is there because they have studied in the school and the school has told them the definition of cancer. So they know it. But there is a spirit of reality. You read just now what the angel says. That, that which is noted in the scripture of truths. Hallelujah. What a term. What a term. And now the Bible says, if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have communication. Communication. We have fellowship. Koinonia. A togetherness. Are you understanding what I'm talking about? There is a flow. Are you understanding this? We have fellowship one with another. In the blood of Jesus Christ, his son cleanses us from our sin. If we walk in the light, 
He has given us his light. We are in the kingdom of light. Even though we are in the world, we are not of the world. Are you hearing me? We have our own laws. We use our own light. They take that guy to the doctor. The doctor says you gotta have an x-ray. Well, over here, we have the word ray. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Come on, somebody. We use the word of God to look inside. And then, as we are trained by the Holy Spirit, oh, this is the most beautiful thing in the whole world. The thoughts, the truth, the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The one who teaches us the word of God. The one who takes the word and makes its substance in us. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The one that helps us such that when we are studying the scriptures, it doesn't just go into our brain. We don't reason out the scripture. The Holy Spirit of God helps us receive the word right into our spirit so that we become one with the word. No wonder Paul coined a new word. He called it epignosis. Do you understand? He's talking about a knowledge of the word of God. He's talking about that kind of knowledge where you are not just knowing it, you are knowing it like this. No, he says you are experiencing the knowledge. You are walking in the light of the knowledge. Oh, hallelujah. God wants to use you. Are you hearing me? God wants to use you. But he can't use you while you're suffering with cancer. He can't use you while you're walking in fear. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Those limitations will not help. God wants to use you. He wants to do great things in your life. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.